Well, sir, it's about 9.30 o'clock in the evening as we enter the small house halfway up on the next block now, and here in the living room we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Cook. Husband and wife are seated on opposite sides of the library table, playing somewhat sluggishly at solitaire, and we hear Sade say, Let's not play anymore. You tired? Mm-hmm. It's a fine thing to do, beat a guy and then quit. <laughs> That was all the only game out of the whole caboodle I won. No, but just the same. Fair play demands you give me a chance for revenge. The ethics of rubbish... Willie home. He'll take my place. You, right? Hi. Good for him. Only 9.30. I'll deal out one more hand, kiddo. I'll deal out one more hand I'll and then... I'll play with can... Willie. I still got my little newspaper daily love story to read. Milton Welsh telephone just after you left. Had something trivial on his mind, no doubt. No doubt. What'd you do with the paper? I may have kicked it under the easy chair. Milton stayed his business? Uh Uh-uh. It wouldn't hurt you to fold up a newspaper when you're through with it and put it on top of something. But no, have to kick it underneath a chair. I'm rotten clean through, Sadie. I'll say. You people having a private discussion? Not at all. Well, look, I'd like to get the benefit of your advice on a certain matter. Okay. It's a certain matter pertaining to Bluetooth Johnson. Blaze away. Bluetooth asked me to find out your opinion on this certain matter and then pass it along to him. Be only too glad to oblige. Bluetooth Johnson, Gov, is thinking very seriously of suing the management of the Baijiu Theater for a considerable amount of money. Indeed. A considerable amount of money. What's the management of the Baijiu done to old Bluetooth? Cause him to suffer possible nervous shock and possible high blood pressure. I just, who to who? I'm supposed to consult you about... I've read this darn newspaper love story before. Same identical darn thing. Sylvia Starbrook was tired of being a rich man's pampered daughter. That's exactly the way the one day before yesterday started off. Well, them stories are all I like to begin with. Read one and you read them all. Same name, though. Sylvia Starbrook. And here, Vance Valloway. Sure, they printed this same identical romance last Saturday. Mistake, probably. Mm. Tell me about Bluetooth. Bluetooth is the victim of possible nervous shock and possible high blood pressure. Possible, huh? Yeah. As yet, however, he don't suffer from either malady? No. Well, tell you, Papa. Bluetooth fell through a defective seat at the Baijiu Theater tonight and crashed to the floor with a thump that shook the building. Vicious. Sounds pretty serious, don't it? Yeah. Might have been killed. Human beings have been killed falling out of defective theater seats. Mm-hmm. Bluetooth feels that he's in a position to sue the Baijiu for a very large amount of money. He wishes me to consider the merits of the case? Beg pardon? He'd like to have me review the facts and decide whether or not I think he could win a lawsuit? Exactly. Well, I have no particular legal learning, but perhaps Same I Same could... identical story. Here's something I read out loud to you last Saturday. Vance Valloway's glossy hair reflected the shimmering summer stars. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Remember me saying I didn't think a person's hair could reflect stars no matter how glossy it was? <laughs> Same identical story. Mm. Same identical story. Ready to hear the facts, Gov? Uh, shoot. Oh, by the way, wasn't it your pal Bluetooth Johnson that was going to sue the Butler House Hotel dining room a while back? Yeah. Quite a fella to sue folks, ain't he? Bluetooth is an individual that's determined to stand up for his rights. Mm, Must be. Well, here's the fact. We started downtown this evening about quarter to seven. Only made one stop. Bluetooth wanted to go in Holder's Hardware Store and buy a can of gray paint. He's making a model of an army tank in his basement. Needed gray paint for camouflage and junk. Okay, he got his paint and we headed directly for the Baijo. When we got inside, the show was just beginning. Oh, yes, I'm not going to read this darn thing all over again. You didn't bring home any candy, did you, Willie? Uh-uh. I feel like something sweet. Mm. Bet if you fell around in your pocket, you'd find a gumdrop or something. You haven't got a thing, Mom, no fooling. The show was just started, starting when we got inside the Baijo, and we took seats pretty down, far down front. How far was the show? Fair. And men sat down for more than two minutes until Bluetooth discovered a nut and bolt on his chair were loose. He leaned over to me and whispered they were just about the size nut and bolt he needed for his model army tank. Hey, you're not going to tell me he took the nut and bolt? Yes, he did. And that's why his chair was defective? Bluetooth is willing to admit it's a weak link in his case. Oh, for Pete's sake. What's all this? Bluetooth Johnson's going to sue the Baijo's uh, picture show because he fell out of a busted chair. 
The reason the chair was busted, Bluetooth helped himself to a nut and bolt. Bluetooth admits that's a weak link in his case, Carl. And mighty large of him, too. Admits it freely. Well, go ahead with your story. In a matter like this, you have to take everything into consideration. Yeah, I expect you do. The fact still remains that Bluetooth crashed to the floor, suffering possible nervous shock and possible high blood pressure. Uh Uh-huh. Individual's spine is a mighty delicate affair. People have fallen out of defective theater seats and been paralyzed six months. Why, I've heard Well, get along with your fascinating story. Bluetooth discovered a nut and bolt in his chair were loose. He stole them. How soon after that did he go crashing to the floor? I say three minutes. Uh Uh-huh. Well, so far, this perplexing case... Wait a second. I left out a link. Mm. When Bluetooth was taking the nut and bolt off in his chair, he made considerable noise. Mm. So much noise that the lady seated directly behind us called the usher. Oh, Lance Rush. The coincidence about that was this lady seated directly behind us was the Baijo manager's mother. Oh, really? Mrs. Sam Ferberman. And called the usher, huh? Called the usher. The usher informed Bluetooth if he didn't cut out the racket, he'd get tossed out on his ear. Monstrous grown-up high school gentleman. But Bluetooth already had the nut and bolt tucked away in his pocket, so he didn't give a darn. Mm. And then the crash? And then the crash. And it was a daisy. Bluetooth's defective theater seat collapsed like a sack of potatoes. Bluetooth sprawled on the floor. The audience was thrown into confusion. Ladies shrieked and children howled. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. I suppose lots of our friends saw the performance. Not at all. The theater was dark. Mm-hmm. Bluetooth scrambled to his feet. I asked him if he was hurt. He said no, but he wouldn't be surprised with what he was suffering from possible nervous shock and possible high blood pressure. Well, cow pasture, I'm ready to hand down my decision. Your half-wit pal, Bluetooth, ought to be placed in some institution. Let me finish to... describing the confusion. All right. When the crash took place, Bluetooth's can of paint fell out of his lap and busted open. It smelled horrible. Sent out a reek that'd kill a horse. People began to get up and leave. Oh, my, my. In addition to that, the lady sitting directly behind us, the manager's mother, Mrs. Ferberman, started to scream. What ailed her? Bluetooth's defective theater seat, plus the weight of his entire body, had fallen on her foot. No. Yes. Crushed it pretty bad, I guess. Anyway, she set up a holler that raised the roof. You better just stay home nights after this, I think, Rush. Why, well, had nothing to do with anything that went on, Mom. I was strictly on the sidelines. Better just stay home nights, I think. Mm-hmm. Do you want my opinion on Bluetooth's chances of collecting a heavy damage suit from the management of the Baijo Theater, hey, George? Yeah. Don't forget he's the victim of possible nervous shock and possible high blood pressure. All right. I'll bear that in mind. Now, let's see what we got. Bluetooth fell out of a defective theater seat. Yeah. A defective theater seat which he himself made defective by removing an important nut and bolt. Bluetooth admits that. <laughs> All right. In addition to stealing part of the theater's equipment, Bluetooth threw the audience into confusion and fright by crashing to the floor. Bluetooth. Also, he broke open a can of paint, damaging the carpets and setting up a reek that drove everybody out of the theater. Bluetooth. And besides that, he crushed a lady's foot. Bluetooth. A lady happening to be the mother of the manager. Yeah, but... What do you think of Bluetooth's chances of collecting heavy damages? (laughs) Not very good, I guess. Altogether rotten, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Altogether rotten. I haven't mentioned the weakest link in Bluetooth's case. Haven't you? Who was that? Uh, we didn't pay our way in. You didn't? No. You sneaked in the show? We sneaked in the show. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up on the next block.